Hello everyone and welcome back to the next lecture of control systems. In this presentation, we are going to discuss the concept of dominant pole. So let's get started. In the previous lectures, we discussed time constant of a control system and we know that the time constant tau is equal to negative of 1 over real part of pole location. But this expression is only valid for a first order system. That is, the number of poles is equal to 1. But if the number of poles in the transfer function is greater than 1, then the tau, which is the time constant, is equal to negative of 1 over real part of dominant pole location. And this expression is defined for higher order systems. Now let us first understand the meaning of dominant pole. The pole, which is nearer to the origin or j omega axis, is called as the dominant pole. So if we are having a higher order system in which the number of poles is greater than 1, then in that case, the pole which is nearer to the origin or the j omega axis is called as the dominant pole. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Suppose Ts is a transfer function which is equal to 5 over s plus 10 multiplied with s plus 1. Now this transfer function is having two poles. That is, it is a second order transfer function. Now which is the dominant pole? The pole which is nearer to the origin is the dominant pole. So here we are having two poles. One pole is present at s equal to minus 10 and the other one is present at s equal to minus 1. So clearly we can see that this pole which is present at s equal to minus 1 is nearer to the origin and hence this is the dominant pole for this transfer function. And if we want to define the overall time constant for this transfer function, then we will consider the real part of this pole location. Now let's understand the reason behind this. If we plot these two poles in the pole zero diagram, we will have this pole zero diagram in which s equal to minus one is this pole and this pole is at s equal to minus 10. We call this pole as the significant pole or the dominant pole and hence this pole is called as the insignificant pole. But why this pole is insignificant pole and this pole is significant pole? So let's understand this by taking the partial fraction of this transfer function. And if we take the partial fraction, we will have a over s plus 10 plus b over s plus 1. We will have some values of a and b. If we take the inverse Laplace transform of this function, then we will have a multiplied with e to the power minus 10 t ut plus b multiplied with e to the power minus t ut. Now we can see this term is having e to the power minus 10t and this term is having e to the power minus t. If we compare these two terms for t equal to 1 second, then this term will be e to the power minus 10 and this term will be e to the power minus 1. So this will be a multiplied with e to the power minus 10 ut and this will be b multiplied with e to the power minus 1 ut. Now comparing these two terms, e to the power minus 10 will be a very low value as compared to this e to the power minus 1. And that's why we can say that a multiplied with e to the power minus 10 t ut plus b multiplied with e to the power minus t ut is nearly equal to b multiplied with e to the power minus t ut. Because even at t equal to 1 seconds, this value e to the power minus 10 is very very less as compared to this value e to the power minus 1. And that's why we can approximate this function as b multiplied with e to the power minus t ut. And this is the reason this pole is regarded as the insignificant pole. So we can say that the system can be approximated with a first order system by eliminating the insignificant pole. And that is what we are doing here. This was a second order system, but we have eliminated this insignificant pole and approximated this system as a first order system. Now, as we are done with the introduction of concept of dominant pole, we will now understand that how we can approximate a higher order system by eliminating this insignificant pole. There are two conditions we need to check when we are approximating a system by the elimination of insignificant pole. The condition number one is position of insignificant pole to that of significant pole should be greater than or equal to four. And condition number two is the DC gain of the system should be same. These two conditions are very important conditions. If these conditions are not satisfied, we cannot approximate a system. Let's understand this with the help of an example. The first order approximation of TS using dominant pole concept is 
the transfer function ts is equal to 5 over s plus 10 multiplied with s plus 1. This is the same example that we have discussed in the earlier section. This is a second order transfer function having one pole at s equal to minus 10 and the other one at s equal to minus 1. So this is the dominant pole and this is the insignificant pole. And we need to convert this transfer function to its first order approximation by eliminating this insignificant pole. Now moving on to the solution, we are given this transfer function and we will now check for these two conditions. In this transfer function, one pole is present at s equal to minus 10 and the other one is present at s equal to minus 1. So if we take the ratio of positions of these two poles, then it will be equal to 10 and definitely it is greater than 4. So condition number 1 is satisfied. Now for condition number 2, we need to find out the DC gain for this transfer function. This is a type 0 system, so we can find out the DC gain as k equal to limit s tending to 0 ts. If we substitute ts, we will have k equal to limit s tending to 0 5 over s plus 10 multiplied with s plus 1. And if we substitute the limit s tending to 0, we will have the DC gain equal to 0.5. So the DC gain of this system is equal to 0.5. So after approximation of this system, the DC gain should be 0.5. Now after eliminating the insignificant pole, which is this pole, we will have transfer function Ts equal to 0.5 over S plus 1. So the DC gain of this system is same as the DC gain of this system. And this is the first order approximation of this transfer function. In this way, we can use the concept of dominant pole to eliminate the insignificant pole and approximate the transfer function. And in this way, we are done with this lecture. We will discuss some more problems based on concept of dominant pole in the upcoming lectures. I'll end this lecture here. See you in the next one.